Hey guys, what's up? This is uh, ZMH Tech here. Um, today I'm going to do a video on how to send a post and a get request in JavaScript. Um, and then the second part of this video, which will come probably next week, will be a post and a get request in PHP. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because if you take a Google search on how to do a post request in PHP or JavaScript, you're going to get basically how to do it with libraries. Um, most of the times, they're not going to show you how to do it with the actual just code. Um, and I like I like doing it with the actual code because it's better. Um, it's obviously a little bit less overhead, and um, you understand basically a little bit more um, because it's a little bit more lower level of coding. Um, so basically we're going to show you how to do that uh, with no libraries in JavaScript and in PHP next week. So uh, just real quick, um, I'm doing this video because I had to do a bunch of posts and get requests in um, the new project I'm working on. Uh, if you go to largedogvrstudio.com or ldvrs.com, um, it's a new um, website I launched for realistic VR games and animations. Um, so I have a few animations on there, like a high dive animations, where you can put the video in your headset and watch it, and um, the camera jumps off. The camera jumps off the uh, the high dive into the pool, and so it acts like you're jumping off the high dive into the pool. And uh, November 14th or 17th, depending on how much time I need. I'm going to release a HTC Vive baseball game, um, and I, I built it really advanced with, um, you could actually, you know, um, baseball players could use that to train on, um, it has that many features, and it's really advanced, and um, anybody anybody that hasn't played baseball would like it too, um, it has simple modes and also very advanced modes, so if you're interested in that stuff, check that out. Um, but that's not what this video is about. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. So back to the video. Um, so basically I set up a little uh, test for you guys. This is my website, but we got it running on the local host right now uh, on my own computer. Um, now, if you don't know how to do that, if you have PHP installed, um, you're basically – it has a um, – a little web server built into it so you don't have to download an extra web server uh, you can just type in this function right here php s and then localhost and then the port 8000 3000 9000 any of those would work um, most ports will work over four to five digits uh, so that's just a little built-in php web server obviously if you're going to be running an actual website um, don't use that it's not good for production, but it's perfect for testing. And it, it does not do um, SSL or TSL, so keep that in mind. Um, you can only run plain HTTP websites on this uh, web server. So I set up that for us, and then I got a little um, client-server demo going on here now. Um, if you're going to be sending it in SSL and TSL, it's the exact same format. So you don't. That's why I'm I'm running it on a test server because there's no code to change. So basically, um, this week we're focused on JavaScript. So over here on the client side, it's JavaScript. So we got um, we got a button that when you click it, it goes to send post request function inside a JavaScript send post request function. We got our data. This is the data you want to send to the server. Um, so basically how you do that is this is a field and then equals your data. Field equals your data. So basically the, the very first field you leave off the and symbol and every field after that you put on the and symbol. So you can see data 1 and then it equals 1. Data 2 equals 2 and we would keep going if we had more data. 
um, the URL. Basically, that's where we want to send this data. Um, so this is what I got running for our test. Um, and then basically you set up a variable right here. And then um, you basically um, set it up. If it's an old browser, it can set up this. Um, if it's new, it's going to run this. And then basically what's this is a callback, so this actually gets skipped. And the next piece of code that gets executed is right here. So you got it, it opens the request, sending it for a post, and get is the exact same as this. The whole code is the same thing. It's just instead of typing in post, we type in get. Um, we'll show you that at the end. Do post first. So it's in a post to the URL and true. True is asynchronous. False is um, not synchronous. So basically, you want asynchronous. Um, if you didn't do asynchronous, what would happen is it would run these um, set headers. You can set all the headers you want. Uh, I usually just use these two. So it will it will open it, set headers, send data, and then right here after this line, if you sent it not synchronous, it's basically just going to block the code and wait right here. Um, so you really don't want your web page like you know freezing kind of your your code. Um, so you want to do asynchronous. So basically the difference is when it hits this, it ends the function. And that's it. Um, it's not blocking anything. And then um, asynchronous basically sets a callback on this code. So eventually, you know, half a second later or whatever, when it finishes, then it will run this piece of code um, without any blocking. So what we want to do up here is um, you set it up basically, and then. Um, you have it to where it has um, the ready state of four. That means it's it's finished. And then um, if you're over here, if you know that your data is going to come back as a JSON format, you're going to want to parse it to JSON parse. Um, if it's coming back as like plain text um, or HTML or something like that. This is the variable that holds your data that you just got back from the server. Um, but this is going to be sent JSON. I did that because most most servers APIs they'll send them back as a JSON. Um, so that's why I include JSON that parts in this example. Uh, then a 200. Um, that's just over here. You can see 200. That's the uh, web request status. You can look that up, but basically 200 in the 200 range means success, and the 400 range usually means failed. And then um, this is just if you need to parse something and check for something, you don't need to do that. And then basically, I have it just posting. Um, if it's successful, do something. If it's not successful, do something. Um, you can set it up, set it up that way. It's going to depend on basically how your API is going to handle the data and send it back to you. Um, the way I have it set up now is just sending error, success, or failed. So we wouldn't want to set it up like this. But again, I'm just showing this for examples. Um, so basically, um, we would just for this we would just want to basically say when it's ready state. That means when it's the data has come back in from the server. Um, we don't even need to. Well, yeah, we'll parse the data, but then we'll just alert. As you can see, it's sending a field and a variable, just like we sent it to it. 
so it's error, um, and you know your API will have documentation or whatever. Um, so that's what we're doing: object .error, and then that's it. Um, so this this looks pretty good. Um, over here, you can basically see it's it's this isn't really PHP tool, but basically over here it's saying it's getting the data one, data two, having an error. Then it's basically saying if the data one is equal to one. It's successful, otherwise put it failed, and then send the data back to the client. Okay, so we set these both up. Um, so we're going to save both. And hopefully it works first time. So we got a button, and it's successful. So we just sent, um, that's how we just sent a post request in JavaScript. And if we want to remember, um, data one had the equal one to be successful. So um, just to show you guys this is actually working. If we do five, refresh, that means it failed. Okay, so that is how we do a, um, that's how we do a post request in, um, in uh, JavaScript, basically. Um, so then, if we want to do a GET request, we'll do that real quick to show you guys. Um, basically, a GET request would be um, let's see, a, a GET request would look something more like this. At least on the server side. Um, okay, and then server, and then basically when it, the data has come back. Since there is, it's probably not going to be in JSON. Um, your API might might be. Just depends. Um, but I think this was a good tutorial to show you both. We'll do that, and then asynchronous. We can get rid of that. And then we're not going to be sending any data because the get request. So we can just do null or, you know, I like doing that better. Okay, so when we click the button, it basically should just say data, basically. And there we go. So that is a, um, it's basically how you do a, a, a get and a post request in JavaScript using no libraries or helper functions or anything like that. You're just using the actual JavaScript. Um, just a plain JavaScript. So um, that's it for this video. Now the next next week, next video is going to be basically on the same thing, but we're going to do a get and a post request in PHP. Um, this video was obviously on JavaScript. So thank you for watching, and um, that's it for this video.